Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to hear this Friday morning. Got a big show lined up. They give away some seafood and all kind of cool things. Got a cool little video and just and cool. Speaking of cool, our weather's cool. It brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Highway 77. It's going to get up to about 58 today and low of low of 50. Not much movement right there. Nice cool day. Uh, really nice. The weekend not looking really good. Uh, what happened, that uh, low pressure area went down, then it's coming back, and uh, we may get some rain. They call it for rain Saturday and Sunday. We'll, we'll just wait and see. Hopefully we'll have some uh, bright spots there. Water temperature 63. has been pretty even all week long. It's hung, hung around 63 degrees. Our river is brought to us by Mountain Dew. Take it outside with Mountain Dew. Man, the Apalachicola River, it went up, folks. It went up fast for all that rain. Right, it's right at 10 foot, and it's uh, rising. So be careful out there on the river. And also, the Choctatch at Caraville, of course, we knew it was rising. It's, it's at 10, both of them right at 10 foot, 9.8 right at 10 foot. And it's going to be some high water this weekend if you get on the river. So be aware of that. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Uh, we're in deep tides today and the next two days. Not much movement at all right there. Our wind direction now will be coming out of north northeast. It's still a little windy at about 11, but it's going to be a, a pretty day today. So if you get a chance to get outdoors, uh, do it. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. I got a kick out of uh, Wednesday afternoon when it got really cold and had our cold snap coming through. Our people calling in uh, that had to leave work early and all because everybody, a lot of outdoors were headed for the woods on that really cool snap. I know a lot of deer were walking. I got all kinds of reports. Uh, I just got a kick out of it. The people when they got home from work had an hour or two left, they went back to the woods somewhere. So good job outdoorsmen here in the Panhandle. Now I want to mention also the uh, gifts. I'm going to finish that list right now. I just got an uh, email from a, a lady looking for my book. I want to remind you again. The book full box is at a couple locations. In St. Joe, it's at Blue Water Outriggers. Okay, in Apalachicola, I got a couple at little bookstore down at Dale's got a couple down in Apalachicola at the bookstore. But right here in Panama City at C and G Sporting Goods, right on Harrison Avenue, and Brad's got them at Sunjammers down in St. Andrew. And it's going to so that's that's where you can go get them, okay? I, now, speaking of the list, <laughs> Jeff and I were laughing because this is my third or fourth attempt at trying to finish the top ten gift for outdoorsmen. I'm going to finish it today, I promise. Uh, this is the list. Now, uh, I'm going to, as a teacher, I sort of, we want to go sort of go over it again if you missed it the first time. So, uh, number one was full box. Number two was the game camera. Number three was the ground blind. Number four was rod and reel. Number five was tackle. So, we sort of covered those. And yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, I left off with the uh, power pole. And we talked about that. So, we're going to do seven, eight, nine, ten. Number seven, I wrote down I wrote down a drone. Now, we've mentioned that before. Again, drones are fascinating. Uh, what's another word, Jeff, for fascinating? They're very, very interesting to use for, for outdoorsmen. And, uh, you know, the military, use, everybody's using them. Uh, the sheriff's office finally lost people. And, I mean, all kind of uses for drones. We predicted that. Of course, we, we weren't the first one to predict that. But what we talked about outdoorsmen using it, especially in a, in a big field or something or, or watching, looking for fish coming through, and it's just fascinating. So, and they're getting more and more technical and more and more uh, and easier and easier to use. So a drone would be a good Christmas gift for outdoors. Number eight, uh, you saw uh, the, the video, we're gonna video today, just cast netting. Just get a cast net and learn. They're easy to throw. Get one for bait net, get one for mullet, uh, just a cast net. Now, I don't know if Bill McNeil is still making them, but if you get an opportunity to get a handmade cast net by Bill McNeil, uh, from St. Andrews. There are not many people left making cast nets, but if you get a chance to give one as a gift, as a present, anniversary, or whatever, uh, definitely do that because I don't, I don't know if he's still making them. He's teaching his son how also. Number nine, especially warm clothes. We just can't, uh, you know, the technology is caught up with our clothes. And it's just, you, you don't have to put a lot of clothes on, you know, bulk up all, but a lot of good uh, undergarment clothes and also warm clothes is good for outdoors. And number 10, I, I wrote this one down, number 10, because you, you don't need it right now, but this summer, and I, I started using them probably five, maybe seven, eight years ago, six years ago. 
snake bite proof boots. I cannot tell you how important those are. Now, the chance of you getting bit by a snake are very slim, but you, especially this year, past year, we talked about the fallen trees and all. I found myself stepping over trees, and, and you're in a situation where uh, it, it's really it's snaky, as my dad would say. It's snaky out there, so I'll be careful. And so uh, snake bite proof uh, boots will be an uh, excellent Christmas gift. So that's, that's from Panhandle Outdoors. That's our 10 top 10 list for the outdoorsmen for this year. And I, there's a lot of other stuff I know y'all are getting. And uh, if you're like me, uh, you're still getting presents. Okay, Ken, Ken mentioned this the other day. Well, uh, let's jump over now to the speckled trout rule. The, the FWC in their meeting, by the way, uh, they, they've got two new zones. I was gonna show you the zone, okay, right here. Uh, okay, it's not up there. They divided the panhandle into actually two zones. It's got a western panhandle. We got now. Okay, here it is, right here. The yellow is a western panhandle, and that starts sort of. You see right at the bottom on the other side of Cape San Blas, Apalachicola Bay. Now, uh, it'll be in the Big Bend. Okay, the blue is the Big Bend. So, understand this. We right, you know, as we as we speak, we're right here on the on the cusp of it, on the edge of, of either one of them. So make sure you know the rules. It's three in the yellow and five in the blue. So that's something that's sort of new for us to sort of make sure we understand where that's headed, okay? All right, now also, while I'm, while I'm in here, let me, uh, okay. I wanna, I wanna show you a couple of pictures. Let's go and take a break while I set these pictures up. Okay, welcome back. I want a couple, a couple of things I want to talk about. And this is from the Bent Rod Fishing Club up there in the Phoenix Springs. They're actually have, putting a course together and they're actually studying this. It's a fish finder mastery, okay? So they're going to offer it and it's for members and friends, okay? And it's going to be, you can go offer by Saltwater Strong and it's going to be at the Senior Center. It will be January the 8th and January the 15th at nine o'clock, okay? There are four modules, and they're going to talk about it. And this course, Fish Finder Mastery, catch more fish or it's free. That's pretty strong right there, isn't it? Okay, so we check this out. The Bent Rod Fishing Club up in Defuniac Springs will be going over this course. That's a good deal right there. All right, Joe Eddy, listen, Joe's a, Joe's a top-notch fisherman, but he specializes in flounder. I don't know if there's anyone in better than Joe Eddy or not. But he found, what, you see what he said? I found a straggler the other night, had a few good tracks, lots of bait fish and mullet. So that's what's going on now. The mullet's out there, and, and there's still some flounder, but there is stragglers, as Joe said. But be aware of that, there's still some, some there. Okay, I think that's all. I'm gonna go and set up the, the video, what I wanted to do. And also, a lot of people are asking me about Travis and FWC. Uh, all I can tell you is just call the regional office and uh, you know, uh, it was just, it's not in my hands on that kind of stuff. They, uh, so anyway, I just call the FWC office and, and see what they tell you. I, I, don't, I don't know that. So, but I know he, he was very popular with our viewers. It, it's really, really refreshing to see because I thought he did a great job with it. I also want to talk about, well, let's set up the video, but before we do that, let's do our, I want to go ahead and do the giveaway now. So I won't forget it. This will be the last one of the year from Crawford Dog Seafood, and we appreciate uh, their sponsorship, and, and we want to make sure you run by there. And a lot of folks get oysters for Christmas, a big old bag of oysters around the fire. We used to do a lot of that. I don't know if we, and we may do it, but we'll be having some Christmas gatherings all. So this is going to be the last one now. But a $20 gift certificate is going to be from Lynn Haven, Chris Miller. All right, and from the Big Red Snapper, wrapping out the year with Big Red Snapper, is going to be Linda Dean from Ebro. So Lynn Haven Ebro, well represented there. So good job on that. All right, this is a video coming up. It's going to be on December, catching mother in December, early December. There's uh, the mother out there, and there's still some of them are still still strong looking and. And I just, uh, I just, you'll see the video what happened. There was just some out there. We happened to see them. I was out in the yard and happened to see them. And uh, in fact, my wife called my attention to them. So, Jeff, let's go ahead and roll this video here.
the solvent. Look at them. All right. Next question: How many do we want to eat? Uh, look at here. They all over the place. That was a good. Let's count them. Let's count how we got. We can't eat all these mullets. We got to keep them fresh. It's all sizes too. I got to. Let's go get a bucket. Let me go get a bucket. Let me tell you all what happened. I was in the yard throwing pine cones out of the yard and Gail came to the door and said, do you see those? And I turned around and looked and a school of mullet right by the dock. So I ran in the garage, got my net, made one cast, and look at them. We got enough, all right, let's see. One, two, that's a big one, three, Look at the sizes. Four, five. Ah. Ah. That's good bait right there. Six. Six. Ah, he's about going through. Seven. Eight, nine. We got nine. We got nine. So I'm like, we're gonna let, we're gonna let most of them go. You want to eat something tonight? You do. All right, here we go. All right, this is the biggest one. I'm gonna let it go. It might be breeding stock. So we're gonna throw that one back. Ooh, that's a good old fat mullet. Look at there. He's happy. There's a little baby one. I'm gonna throw him back too. All right, here we go. All right, that's a good size one. Uh oh. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. We got. Uh, I got one in the bucket. Ow. One bucket, you want this one? Or one of these, which size you want? Uh, four, that's four. And uh, there you go. Oh, we kept, we kept three and released five. So we'll, we'll cook them up. I'll get some more tomorrow night maybe. Is uh 16 inches long, 16 inches long. Oh. It goes to show you when you're not even uh when you're not looking for fish, or I'm, that's when you find them. I was working in the yard, and uh, like I say, Gail just stuck her head out the door. Look out there, and I ran, literally ran in the garage, grabbed my net, and brought it out here. I only made one cast. I was in a hurry, 
I could have got it better. I could have got it probably more, but eight was enough. And like I said, we only kept three, so let the other five go. All you folks want fresh mullet now. I know you're mad at me, but I got to sort of know. It's sort of late in the afternoon. I ain't got time calling anybody, so I'll try to get y'all some next time. All right, welcome back. Glad you're with us this morning. I, I'll get the fishing game time to you in a second, but I, I want to go ahead and get set up for the fishing report. We're looking at, I got a call last night, late yesterday afternoon, a guy was looking for some crappie minners, and, and there's not very many. We started talking, and you just can't find many of them anymore. I'll tell you what's, going, what's happening, and you've seen it over the, over the last 20, 30 years. We've, we've losing, we've lost our, our, the old tackle store, the old bait and tackle store, and, Pilchers and all over the place. Every little community had a bait and tackle store. Well, we just, you know, they've been part of the American landscape. They've sort of vanished. And it's sad because, you know, worms and crickets and all, they're hard to find. So if any of you know where the crappie minnows are, give me a call and I'll let our viewers know, especially this time of year. A lot of folks want to go crappie fishing and it's been really good. So let's get started with a report. The freshwater. <laughs> Again, the freshwater the river system is going to be high. You saw the right at 10 foot at Choctatchee and Apalachicola right at 10 foot. It's going to be raining this weekend some. It's going to be a tough time to do some river fishing, but now next week or, or getting after Christmas, and like I said, this will be our last report for this year, so we're going to try to encompass the whole Christmas break. So after Christmas, the river starts falling. It's going to be in good shape to do some really good fishing. The crappie, again, the crappie, Lake Tyquan, you know, that's, that's uh, the go-to place for crappie. And if you get a chance to go there, a lot of the Deer Point Lake has some too. I, I've seen them out of there, so try to uh, try to hit those places on fresh water. Also, uh, again, let's go over to salt water now in the marsh area. Bass fishing is going to be good. It's, it's going to be good in, in the winter time, and it's starting that winter trail to be setting setting up. And these guys that know how to bass fish. They're going to hit it hard down at Howard's Creek and places like that. Flounder. I wrote down salt water flounder. Still, you saw Joe Eddy, still some stragglers out there, but most of the flounder are going to be outside the pass. We talked about this last week, outside the pass around those structures, so keep that in mind. But let's talk about trout fishing. Speckled trout fishing is going to be really good, and uh, we, try to, we try to go every, every Christmas uh, vacation, uh, try to take the kids trout fishing if we can. And, you know, where to go here in, in Bacon, over in Choctahatchee, and the guys will tell you, Larry Brown and all of them, they'll, they'll come down to these flues right in here, or these, these outlets here. A lot of these guys fish on this side of the bridge, okay, and around the Point Washington area, but all, all through this area here. The intercoastal now, those trout will get up in the intercoastal and they'll be, they'll be in that area there. And they'll come on over here, okay, to West Bay. And well, I feel real good about West Bay. I just one of the areas, I, sort of my home turf, I guess, because I live out in that area. And what I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I'll be doing. I'll either put in here at Lynn Haven and come fish this area right through here. Okay, I'll put it here at Burnt Mill Creek, come fish this area right through here or back through here. That's basically, I, I spend 90% of my fishing, uh, one of the trout fishing in that area right in there. But now, don't let that hold you because the East Bay boys and girls uh, will be doing the same thing. Uh, I know if Captain Roy goes, he'll, he'll be going to uh, well, he, he'll hit these creeks here, and he'll all up in East Bay, but he loves Sandy Creek. And, and, and when he gets a chance to go to Sandy Creek, he'll come down Sandy Creek and he'll fish, he'll fish all through here and right here at the mouth. And Callaway Bayou is going to be a hot spot too. Callaway Bayou will be really hot. Okay, also in Apalachicola Bay. Well, okay, St. Joe Bay. St. Joe Bay, the, the trout fishing on the side through here, okay, on this edge right in here. Up around Black's Island is going to be really good, and Town Beach. That's the top three spots. One, two, three. Okay, that would be really good there. St. Vincent Sound. We don't talk about it enough. This is put here, put in here, Indian Pass, and you can. I promise you, you can catch a lot of trout. Watch out for the oyster bars. Really good trout fishing up in here, and good red fishing. And of course, Bill and I, and we, we talk about this a lot of fishing. I'll go into more detail at the first of the year, some really good places on, on the north of East Point. And of course, I want you to do some bridge fishing off East Point too. If you get a chance to do, make sure you do some bridge fishing. Backside of St. George Island, wow, what a treasure place to catch a lot of good fish on this backside here. You can put your boat in here at the bridge and go out through here, or you can actually, 
There's some space. You can't really weigh too much because what happens if you weigh too much is it's really muddy in that part of the bay. Let's get down to Carabell. You heard Captain Kim talk about the good fishing they've had up here in the creek coming right down in here. These trout will be coming up in here. It's going to be really good trout fishing right up here. Backside of Dog Island. Backside of Dog Island up in this slough. I, I promise you there's going to be a lot of trout caught right through here. Okay, I know, I know the guys are fishing that area. And they, now these, these guys know how to fish. They're really good at it. So anyway, that, that's that real quick. That's, that's the, uh, I also written down uh, sheephead. Be sure you hit some sheephead fishing along those bridges. It's going to be good. Use some fiddler crabs with sheephead. I wrote down a couple of notes on, on hunting. Uh, up Bitter Grantham, he, he told us, called us this week and said, the rut is on up in Apalachicola. I mean, the Appalachia management area up in Jackson County, the rut is on. So, man, the toughest thing about outdoors and around from now on to, through January, do I fish or do I hunt? Do I fish or do I hunt? Well, my advice, just, just do both of them. <laughs> Try, if you can get a chance, do both of them, which, which is what we do. So we're just blessed to live in this area here and blessed to have these kind of opportunities. So we're going to have to start wrapping things up. We'll... Uh, We'll, we'll be here on, on Monday's show, and it's going to wrap it up for you. We've got one more good show coming in, and uh, we'll do that one, and then we'll take a break. We'll be doing our top shows of the year, and that's always exciting. We'll talk about that later. So, anyway, you'll have a great weekend. Do something good today for your fellow man, and enjoy our great outdoors, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Van Handle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.